Hello? Hello, it is me, Takase. Takase, what do you want? He's coming. Who? Maybe Blaze, I will tell you something about it. <laughs> Who's coming? What do you want? I can't understand you. Who's coming? You two have left me severely underprepared for this. Oh, good thing I kidnapped him after G-Fest. Hello fellow Kaiju fans and happy Ultraman Day! I am GPTV and today I am going to be reviewing Ultraman Blazar. Also, I just want to warn you if you see Taguchi walking around at any point, I've kidnapped him, like I said, so he's just kind of wandering around the place. Ultraman Blazar was obviously massive for my channel. I streamed almost every single episode and I really thank everyone who came out to those. Speaking of which, I am streaming Ultraman Arc now, so be sure to show up to that. But Blazar wasn't just big for my channel, it was big for the franchise as a whole. As it sort of lost its footing with Trigger and Decker, it brought in a bunch of second gen aspects, which really revitalized everything. So without further ado, let's talk about the show that restored the Ultra franchise. Starting with... Vice Captain Teraraki was easily one of my favorite characters in the show. He had this awkward sternness about him that I really liked. For example, in episode 2 when he's looking for a pen. He was also brilliant. Like we see in episode 8 when he has a fantastic dialogue with the professor. He then takes a very tactical shot at him. Of course, his awkward part comes in when he asks for a signature from the guy after. Or in episode 16 when he escapes the hospital with stolen data just to tell Captain Genta. I love how the show plays it up, and I love how his family's farm is brought up a lot throughout the show, to the point we even get an episode where we go there. It's great character and world building all rolled into one. Also making him captain for a bit in the finale was a fantastic payoff for his character, even if it was just for one episode. He respected Gento throughout the whole show, and it ended with him getting his role. Anri was probably the team member we got the least out of. I really wanted to like her, but the show just did so little with her character. She likes music and she hates bugs. I wish the show had some sort of payoff for her hating bugs by maybe having her get over the fear by listening to music. Also, she might have been in love with Yasunobu? Speaking of Yasunobu, he was really funny, and his actor has some great charisma. Episode 6 introduces the character trait of him overworking himself, and I thought he was a very good episode lead. I wish there was more episodes where he was the main focus. Episode 21 almost does, but it doesn't commit. Overall, I think he was pretty underutilized, besides the bare minimum of his character helping Scar. And he gives us an attack team member we've never really seen before, and if we have, it's quite rare. What I love about her is she's defiant, but she still has her own limits. Like in episode 14, where she stands up to the chief and confronts him despite the threats that he throws at her. She doesn't back down. Versus episode 16, where she explains to Earthy how she's very nervous to pilot him. And also Mogujan realizes her fear and she sees herself, which I believe is meant to portray her loneliness after her dad died. She has her own side mission, and I think connects to the main story really well. All the stuff she does on her own in episodes 18 and 19 end up being key factors in the resolution of the finale. This also gives her a special relationship with Gento, which I really like. It gives us something beyond just Captain and his subordinates. The show also does the same for her and the Chief. Chief Haruno was very similar to the storage director in Ultraman Z at first. Just a mean face with power over the team. He's painted as the bad guy, but in reality he's just trying not to get in trouble and get fired. Of course he does end up taking the blame for Scar's mistakes and does get fired. And I love how the show resolves his character by having him help Emmy in the end. Yu Dobashi was also set up as a villain, but in reality he is a good guy deep down. He just made a mistake some years ago and he's kind of doing some shady stuff to cover it up. What I like about this is that the show keeps you guessing, you never really know who is bad and who's not. I also really like his actor, and 
Unfortunately, he has passed away, so I would like to pay my respects to him and his family. And finally, Captain Gento, the host of Ultraman Blazar himself. Making him the captain allows for everyone to look up to him, as opposed to the usual Ultraman show, where the Ultraman host is looked down upon, typically. It allows the audience to really respect him, too. I also like how the show displays how he's very smart, but he doesn't know everything. Like in episode 1, when he runs into danger, it's a very tactical decision, we get to see his entire thought process. Where in the typical Ultraman show, the host running into danger would be a stupid reckless act. But like I said, he doesn't know everything, like in episodes 10 through 12, where he has no idea how to communicate with Ultraman Blazar. It allows the show to have character drama with him without painting him as an idiot. He's also just a really good captain. I think this is especially displayed in episode 8. He makes smart and tactical decisions for the team, and he still has intelligent discussions about the sacrifices they may have to make with them. And also seeing him as a father gives us a really human look at him. It gives him something to fight for that is tangible. And I also love how the show builds up his relationship with his son, like in episode 15. I also love the detail that he hides his job as an attack team captain from his family. It creates more drama beyond just the fact that he is Ultraman and he doesn't want anyone to know. In fact, nobody ever does find out that he is Ultraman, which is really cool. Bazanga has an incredible design. It's one of my favorite kaiju designs ever. And the episode is just a masterclass of how to build up the threat of a kaiju, showing all sides of the military, throwing everything at the monster and failing no matter what. Even Ultraman Blazer has a struggle with it. It makes him super memorable, especially as a monster in the first episode, Gatos. He's from a really fun episode, which makes him pretty memorable despite him not being too special. Although I would like to point out the detail on the suit is amazing, it's got fantastic texturing on it. It's this kind of thing that makes the monsters in Blazar seem so much more advanced than before. He also seems to be a guesser at tribute, which I really like. Taganular. Initially, I thought the suit was very impressive, but I didn't really care for it much. This was until episode 23, with the added on lore that the whole time Teganulars have been trying to stop the V99. That made me fall in love with him. Plus he was used for a Legion reference, so you just gotta love him. Levira was such a unique kaiju. It threw away all typical new gen design traits for something completely new. It makes it super memorable. I also love how freaky it was throughout the episode. You don't typically see ultra kaiju that just freak you out. It gave her a really unique experience. Dorgo. I love his Showa aesthetic. I'm also a fan of him being a good monster and not being killed. Although I do wish because of that, he reappeared later in the show. Imagine getting to see Dorgo fight another monster like Gabalga or Verilon. That would have been cool. Nijik Gachi. Hopefully this is the monster the show is known for. Just like Bazanga, the monster is incredibly betrayed and built up as a threat really well. Despite it appearing early on in the show, it feels like one of the biggest threats throughout the entire series. I love its colorful design and its unique goat-like head. In the storms were a cool touch. They allowed for some phenomenal visuals. I also love how it went berserk. I love when monsters do that. And his return as a ghost on top of that was very cool. Due to its appearance in all three episodes it's in being so good, it really makes him the standout monster of the show in my opinion. Gabalga is how you make a good ultra kaiju design. It takes typical new gen design traits by making him intimidating, but it also brings in that classic goofy ultra look to make him just feel so alien. He's got a typical new gen body, but the face of a saucer monster from Ultraman Leo. I also think it's cool how the monster has lots of insane abilities, and the range of the suit is crazy. The fact that the person inside of it is rolling is just wild to me. I love the weird alien movements of the head and the sounds it made. It just, it really felt like an alien kaiju. A lot of space monsters in Ultraman don't feel alien, but Gabalga really nails that. The only downside to the kaiju for me is that I think it could have been built up as more of a threat in its first episode. Niji Kagachi seemed more intimidating to me, and that was several episodes beforehand. Deltendal. When Blazer's kaiju lineup was first revealed, Deltendal was my favorite. It was a very promising kaiju, especially in its debut episode. It was an aerial-only kaiju which led to some really unique fights. It made some really cool noises, and it just looked pretty good. Its first episode wasn't the focus, so episode 21, his second appearance, was the time to make the kaiju shine. However, that episode 
flopped at doing that. It introduced so many differences with the new one and didn't explain why they were there at all. It was just confusing. It was all build up and no payoff with explanation. Mokujin was an awesome show at Tribute, and I love its abilities being the excuse for cameos. Because of that, M1 was in Blazar, which is awesome, so I'm a big Mokujin fan. And all of its abilities were just really fun in general. Zangil. I was disappointed at first that he wasn't evil, but I quickly learned to love him as soon as I saw the episode. It introduced some really cool and unique concepts, like monster ghosts. I love that. He also had a really fun personality. Him speaking Old English was such a unique quirk that I love. And his design was great. Giving him a knife head like Weirun was so fun. Irugo slash Brood Gabolga. I think the worms paired pretty well with the Gabolga design. However, ultimately the monster wasn't very memorable. The show bet on its size making it memorable, but... That just didn't work. Ferdren. I love the concept of Ultraman Blazar taming a bird on his home planet, but it felt like a puzzle that was never put together. It was a great idea, but it just didn't feel present in the show. Suzugan was one of my favorite kaiju designs from the show. Despite the bulkiness and size of the suit, the movement wasn't limited at all. It was very quick, it wasn't clunky like I thought it would be. Although his episode is kind of forgettable, so I don't have much to say about him. Verilon. His initial design was very good. I like the head, it looked like the creature, it feels very alien once again. I love how the V99 monsters feel very alien. I liked his butt bombs. I've always sort of had a fascination with nuclear bombs, so giving an Ultra Kaiju basically a nuclear bomb ability just really appealed to me. Also, the Gigan reference was very cool, giving him a buzz saw. Love that. If you couldn't tell, I'm a Godzilla fan. And I loved its goal to move the moon's orbit. I've always thought that was a cool concept, and here it is in Ultraman Blazar. So I was already pretty in love with Verilon, obviously. And then I saw its second form. One of my favorite Kaiju designs of all time just like Bazanga. It's super intimidating and super memorable. It mixes lots of typical new gen kaiju design traits with a lot of Blazer's more weird and unique side. And finally, the V99. They're a lot like Alien Bolton. And assuming Bolton can't have a proper appearance in an Ultraman show ever again, Taguchi essentially making Bolton the main villain of Blazer without actually having Bolton in it is genius. And the design reflects that. It just looks like a Bolton head. And the returning monsters were amazing. There were so few of them for once, and when they did come back, they were all given such amazing and fresh appearances. Ultraman Blazar. His design is goaded. It feels unique without making it look like an OC. And giving him a giant battle scar on his head? Dude, that's just so sick. And it also does asymmetrical right. It was cool on Decker, but it didn't feel necessary. With Blazar, it feels 100% necessary. I've also always wanted a space-themed Ultra. Ever since I was little, I've, I've had ideas like an Ultraman named after the event Horizon of a Black Hole, and now we have an Ultraman named after a black hole, essentially. Once again, just appealing to me! Blazer has lots of really cool and unique abilities, which I loved. However, they did kind of feel underutilized. And his grunts are in the top three Ultra grunts for me, along with Ultraman Z and Ultraman Ace. Having him roar? Blazer literally roaring? Is so cool. And also on that note, having him not be able to speak is also so unique and genius. Same with the, the, the his Blazar Ray, the special beam not being used until the end. It allows for really special moments. The Tilsonite Sword. I have a love-hate relationship with the sword. I think its first episode is really cool and at least one of the coolest Ultra Kaiju kills of all time. And I love how it feels like a sword. I love how it's forged from Tilsonite from Garamon. It's way more unique of an origin compared to most Ultraman swords. However, I don't know if Blazer really needed a sword. Every Ultraman has a sword these days, and with Blazer being so unique, I wish him not having a sword was part of his uniqueness. I feel like maybe in episode 12, he could have gotten a power-up to a Spiral Berate. Not to mention, I think Bandai could have sold the Spiral Berate as a toy. I think ultimately the Lancer should have been the only weapon he got. Speaking of that, 
Ultraman Blazar Ferdrin Armor. It is an incredible design. It quite literally makes Blazar look godly. It's by far the best way to do Ultra Armor. Not to mention it's made from a kaiju. That's so sick. Also, the form improved the sword by making it the Lancer. And there's less focus on, hey, look, this is like a toy you could buy, and it feels more naturally integrated. It's just, it's not a sword, and that's the most important part, despite being part sword. I wish we saw more of the Ferdinand armor, honestly. I like that it showed up later in the show, but it was kind of too cool to do that, almost. The members. Scarred was a super competent team. Compared to more recent attack teams, we actually see Scarred do stuff on the ground. They get the job done when it's needed. Although my biggest complaint about the team is that they could have felt more bonded. It felt more like a workplace with people who just work together compared to like a family, like storage was. Earth Garen was really cool. Example A is that it looks like Kiryu and I'm a Godzilla fan. I love the little details it had, like the, like the eyes changing depending on the situation, and how it got different mods throughout the show that allowed it to do different things. Sadly, Earth Garen doesn't really do anything until the movie. Sure, he helps out in the Nijikagaju fight, he kills a worm and a few Zuzugan babies, and he helps Blazer defeat Gygus and Red King, but that's about it. This is in stark contrast to King Joe and Ultraman Z which is killing monsters even Z couldn't, halfway through the series. Ultimately, I think this complaint could have been rectified by having Earth Garen kill Delton Del B in episode 21. Although I do want to say I like how giving Earth Garen a voice allowed him to be integral in the finale by having him talk to the V99, the GGF. I like how present they feel throughout the show. And I love how it shows that Scarred is just a branch, one of many branches in the GGF. And I love how we get to see a lot of those other branches. I also find it neat how a lot of the time civilians refer to the GGF and not Scarred directly, like in episode 15. I also think it was cool that they were very serious and felt like a real military, like it wasn't dumbed down for the show. And seeing things from their perspective sometimes allowed episodes to feel like Godzilla movies like in episode 1 and episode 25. Once again, as a Godzilla fan, that really appeals to me. Like a blazer! Alright, for Bakura and no Spectre, I have a bit of a story. Last year was the beginning of my junior year of high school, and I had fears of it being the hardest school year of my life, because junior year is always hyped up that way. And I had thought back to the previous hardest year of schooling that I had gone through, which was the 8th grade. And at that time, Ultraman Z was coming out. And I used Z as a crutch big time to get through that year of hard work. And it ultimately allowed Z to mean essentially the world to me. It's my favorite Ultraman show of all time. So leading into my junior year with Blazer coming out, it wasn't long before I was using Blazer as a crutch. And I was very happy that the Ultra series was once again in a place where it could get me through a hard time. Blazer's theme song became the symbol of this feeling to me, and it made me feel like I could do anything. In the end, my junior year was definitely the hardest school year I've ever had to go through. But I made it through with the help of Ultraman Blazer. And now I turn back to the Blazar opening, remembering the anxiety it just melted away. I can now listen to it as an anthem of overcoming challenges that face me in life. Ultimately, to me, it's beautiful, and it means a lot. As for Blazar's first end song, Black Star, I didn't really care for it at first, but I really like it now. Compared to Blazar's second end song, Brave Blazar, which I loved immediately, mainly because it sounded like Blazar's battle theme. Speaking of Blazar's battle theme, it is instantly iconic. To me, it became the theme of the future of Ultraman, the revitalization of the franchise. Combat Superiority 3 and Combat Outnumbered 1 are very, very good tracks. And I like how Combat Outnumbered 2 is a sick, evil, twisted version of the Bakura no Spectra instrumental. The Tilsonite sword theme makes me drool. Scard's Wandabada is one of the best of all time. And Monster Fury is one of the most insane pieces of music ever composed for the Ultra franchise. I implore you all to listen to it right after this video. I could go on and on about how much I love the soundtrack, but I'm gonna cut it off there for my own good. Every episode of Blazar was at the very least good. There were about three subpar episodes to me, but at worst, they were like six out of ten, which isn't that bad. Taguchi, the main director obviously, and Nakagawa, 
really understood the assignment of making Blazer feel like something that has never come before. And Koshi too, kind of, with episode 9. Sadly, I feel like a lot of the other directors didn't really understand this. While they still produced very good episodes for Ultraman standards, it didn't feel like nothing that had come before it. And having Blazer be a fresh start, not connecting to anything before it, allows me to recommend a really good modern Ultraman show to new fans. Blazer also features probably the best attack team setup we've ever gotten. Showing the reason it was created was really smart. Having the GGF do literally everything in their power to try and stop Azanga and failing no matter what was really cool. And seeing each member get recruited was great as well. I love how everything was more episodic. Ultimately, it really worked in Blazer, despite the fact I do kind of wish it had a really crazy overarching story. But the overarching story we did get being a mystery was pretty cool. I wish it was more present throughout though. Getting loads of new monsters was so cool to see. It was surreal, honestly. And like I said before, the returning kaiju were few and far between, but when they did come back, they were given lots of respect. Also, Blazer having a more serious tone was so refreshing. Need I point out the two shows that came before it? Blazer also had really good world building. For example, episode 22 where we see kaiju damage insurance. It's so random, but I love it. Also, having Blazer released with an English dub at the exact same time as the Japanese version is a first for the franchise. And the English dub is phenomenal. I find myself listening to the dub way more than the Japanese version. Because it's just that good. And I speak English, so... Kind of, it's kind of, kind of a given. Overall, Blazer laid fantastic groundwork for the revival of Ultraman after Ultraman Trigger and Ultraman Decker. Honestly, I look back at the first three episodes and get kind of emotional watching them. Simply just seeing how much the Ultra series had been saved for me. However, Blazer isn't perfect. I do have a few dislikes. My first dislike is how the blazer brace was a little too slow. I really like it and how it doesn't look like a toy at all. However, it still kind of has a problem where it feels like everything stops when Gento transforms. Sure, it's a lot shorter of a transformation than say like Orb or Jeet or Rube or Z. It still kind of felt like it was interrupting things. And this clearly stems from Bandai's involvement, which ultimately I think was a big problem in the show. Blazer was clearly trying to break away from it, but Bandai kept getting its nasty claws back in there. This is especially present in episode 21, where Blazer transforms, then he changes in the Fridrin armor, and then he summons the Tilsonite sword, all in a row. And it's just like, oh my god, that is rough! It's kind of out of Blazer's control, but I really wish that they could have at least in some way sped up the transformations. Also, unfortunately, I do have to address the fact that Blazar did kinda overpromise. The trailers in the first three episodes really build up Blazar as this insane new thing that you've never seen before anywhere. And my reaction to that first trailer was real. That is really what I was expecting. And that is kind of what they advertised. And Blazar ultimately was not that. It was a very good Ultraman show with concepts introduced and old things removed and changed. It was not the groundbreaking, awe-inspiring, jaw-dropping masterpiece that I thought it would be. As for the movie, I can't really say much about it because it's not in English yet. All I could say is it has probably the best special effects in the Ultra series, besides the obvious, and Earth Garen is way cooler and does way more things in the movie. The movie does kind of seem to have that problem though, where my expectations were a little too high compared to what we did get. In conclusion, Ultraman Blazar is a great show that kind of suffers from giving too high of expectations. It proves that second gen elements work in the new gen formula, although there still are some kinks that need to be worked out. Overall, I give Blazar an 8.5 out of 10. Blazer will always mean a lot to me, despite its flaws. Between watching each episode live with you guys and what it meant to me in my personal life, it's not perfect, but it is very good. You know what they say, shoot for the moon. And if you miss, you'll land amongst the stars. Hey!